Well, I was in worship just a couple hours ago this evening. I heard the Lord say this phrase to me, and it was, the phoenixes are rising. You know, and so I was just preparing for, um, that's the way that I like to prepare to teach, prepare for my mentorship group is just really to like get in the place of his presence. And so, you know, I was just sitting and, and thinking about like some of the things that, the shifts that we've been feeling as a church and just what, how God is changing things that today, March 4th is such a prophetic day. And, you know, it just so symbolizes a day of moving forward, a day of advancement, a day of territory taking. And, you know, last week I had, re um, I had released a word and I was talking about how God, you know, has been removing us from some tables and has been setting new tables for us and how there's been this, um, there's been a process of grief that a lot of people have walked through as they've had to like release the, um, you know, the, the tables of the past season and, and the places where they used to, the connections and where we've been sitting, you know, and how we had to let go of the one to move into the next season. And so in this time, there had been, you know, the Bible says there's a time to, to weep, a time to, a time to, to laugh, a time to cry. And, you know, <laughs> The days of mourning and the days of grief are behind us. And I see this, you know, this rising up from the places of the ashes. This is a time, and this is what the, the phoenix, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it is a fiery, it's a mythical fiery bird that flies, that soars, that rises from places of, of the ashes, of the fire, of the destruction. And I just see that like this is such a beautiful picture that the Lord has shown me of like what he's doing now of this resurrection life, what he's doing in the body of Christ, where we have been in our places where we have had to grieve, we have had to mourn, we've let go of the things of the past season, we've had to open up our hands and and surrender to the Lord some things that we had desired to hang on to because God was unhindering us. He was freeing us up. He was releasing our arms so that we could, you know, embrace what he has for this new season. But this is a time. So there's so many, you know, and and who and it's it's like the Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, like resurrection power, like the rising of the ash of these phoenixes and these ones, the, they're these prophetic warriors, these ones who, you know, and not just prophets, but a prophetic generation and people who are rising up and taking their place and have been birthed in places of difficulty and sometimes hostile environments and where things, you know, it, it was just like all around, it looks like dust, like death, like nothing, but there is a beautiful soaring and a rising that is taking place. And just like Ezekiel called out and he said, you know, God said to him, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel, man of faith, he's like, only you know, God, only you know. And God said, prophesy, prophesy to these, these dry bones and they will live. And so he said, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. And he spoke and he called it forth into existence. And so God is raising up his people who understand that we are created in God's image in that we have that prophetic utterance, the power to, you know, speak the things that God is saying, to call forth, to partner with him and to speak into existence these things that seem to be dry bones, these things that seem to be, you know, miss, I, I just seen places of, of seeming like miscarriage of destiny, where there are those of you who have felt, you, you feel, you have felt that that it was a miscarriage and that things you know were not going but i just see this resurrection life and i see the, this resurrection life and it's like um in medical terms we we often talk about a missed miscarriage where it's like the baby dies in the womb but it doesn't actually pass and so it's like i see these missed miscarriages where there was in a sense, a death, like a death to something that was birthing and gestating in your spirit, but it didn't pass. And so, but I hear the Lord speaking to these and he's calling life and it just speaking forth life into those places where there seemed to be miscarriage of destiny, where it seems that there was, 
that the, that the promise was not going to come to fulfillment because because of situations and circumstances and seeming impossibilities, but we are moving into this dispensation, into this time where we are, yes, reviving dreams, Nathan, where we're going to see the resurrection power come to every area of our life. Because, you know, guys, we were made not in the image of Adam, but made in the image of Christ. In Adam, all are born into sin in Christ, all are reborn into resurrection power. You know, another thing the Lord was showing me was because this is such a time of like resurrection life, of rising up, of soaring, even in the places where it seems that everything has been like burnt, has been demolished, has been, you know, and, and even as I'm saying that, like there has been, there has been uh, a leveling, there has been a demolishing, there has been a removal, and God has allowed many things, many things to crumble, many things to fall, things that, you know, some things were his, some things were even his idea, and they were his initiative, and he had started them out, you know, and there were other things that were actually man's ideas and man's initiative. And so there's things that were man's ideas and things that were God's ideas that he started, he put in your heart and you set out and, and he's allowed it to fall and he's closing the chapter on that season. You know, God has, gives us, he gives us the plans, he gives us the blueprints and he tells us to move forward, but sometimes he switches the direction and so just because I just feel this, like just because he switched the direction and now he's asking you to pivot and to move in a different direction, he says, it doesn't mean that you missed it. You didn't miss it. Some of you, you heard him very clearly. And just because something didn't come to fulfillment does not mean that it was not him who put that seed in your heart. And so he says, I am well pleased with you, my sons and daughters who took those prophetic promises and you took hold of them. You mixed your faith with them and you put your, you know, you put your faith to work and you started out, but there has been such an incredible shaking and the Lord says that the shaking that you have endured was not a shaking for your destruction, but it was a shaking for your purifying. It was a shaking for your strengthening. It was a shaking for removing all those things that needed to be shifted. And it was a shaking for realignment. And I can see that there were some areas where like, man, you, you, you were on a, we had good ideas, good plans, God ideas, God plans, but there was actually some connections, relational co connections and alignments that were out of place. And God did not want, you know, the plan and the vision that he had given us for this next future, you know, he wants it to be sustained because this season is about legacy and it's about like what we're going to, you know, pass on to the next generation. And so some things that were, you know, some things that were his ideas and just because we had the wrong partnerships in it seem to have fallen apart. And so there is this needfulness to, you know, brush yourself off, you know, brush yourself off, off the dust and the ashes. You know, the Phoenix rose up from the place of the ashes, the place of fire, the place of seeming destruction, the place of, 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 of burning the furnace of affliction. And, and there are some of you who you have been so frustrated because you're like, I had a guy, God idea and I set out and I did it. And it just seemed like things didn't. The Lord is leveled the field for you and he is going to you're going to hear the words cast your net again cast your net again and because we're in a different time and this is a prophetic time and it is a prophetic time of advancement and so you are going to have to you know, muster up that faith and that courage to go again, to go again and to cast the net, to either cast the net where you already cast it and you didn't find anything or cast it on the other side. But then I actually see some people and God's going to like, this is going to mess with your mind a little bit because he's, you got these large fishing nets and it's like you've tried with the large nets and you cast it out and you didn't get the return that you wanted. And I actually see him removing these large, broad nets out of your hand and putting in 
a fishing rod in your hand. It's just the, with the reel and the, like the hook, like just that one. And the Lord says that what you couldn't do with your massive effort in the last season, there is going to be a grace on you that you are going to have such blessing and favor that you are going to do more with less effort, less strategy, less you know, seeming capability, then you're going to, you're going to have more result than you were able to do with your vast, you know, efforts and striving and, and plans and strategies, you know, and so is different things for different people. And it kind of depends on what were the tests or the things that God has worked out in you and what specifically is your metron? What are you called to? Cause guys, you know what? Part of that is, you know, there are some who have been, you know, going after the masses and the larger and the crowds and God is actually shifting your vision. He's saying, you're not actually called to go after the many, but I have strategically aligned you so that you can go after the one. And he is going to show you who the one is. And, and it's going to be a life of just divine appointment and divine connection, like one after another. And I just see the Lord setting you up for success. You know, and there's this other picture that he gave me, you know, and so I, I mentioned that, you know, Adam, okay, so we all know that Adam, Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And so because of the fall, all man were born into sin, born in the likeness of Adam, you know, in the flesh. But then Jesus came, Jesus came, has the, this plan of redemption that was written before the foundation of the world. Jesus came and he gave up his life. He died so that we are not now born in the likeness of Adam, but we are born in the likeness of Christ. And creation is groaning. The earth is groaning for the sons and daughters of God to be manifest. Creation is groaning for the bride of Christ to rise up and to understand who she is. Do you know who you are as the bride of Christ? Do you understand that you are no, no longer made of the dust and born and, and, and unto, unto sin and death, but now the resurrection life of Christ is alive and it is time for the world, for, I'm going to speak for Canada, for the United States, you say your own nation, it is time for the world to see the manifest sons and daughters rising as a, as the bride of Christ in a likeness that the world has not seen in an unusual level of unity. And so I just, I had this picture as I was in worship and, you know, and I, so I was thinking about, you know, it talks about Adam and Eve, like, you know, the first man and woman and how, you know, so man was formed from the dust, but, but Eve wasn't formed from the dust. What did God do? He put Adam into a deep sleep and he took a rib from his side and out of, you know, out of the rib from his side, he formed out of his flesh, out of Adam's flesh, he formed woman. And it was so precious, not the dust of the earth, but the flesh of his body. So she would be close to his heart. She is there one flesh is husband and wife, you know, even, you know, even though they fell and born into sin, you know, but one flesh, he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, you know, and this, this was a beautiful picture, you know, of how God wanted it to be like, you know, so Jesus is, you know, the last Adam. So he comes and he replaces the last Adam. So then who are we as the Christ? So then we are like Eve, we are the bride of the Christ. We are like Eve, to, was to Adam, we are the bride to Jesus. And, you know, so it doesn't say that, you know, the church was taken from, does it say, where was the church birthed? I was just thinking about this as I was in worship. Where was the church taken from? The church was birthed in the death on the cross. Adam got to go into sleep. Jesus had to go into sleep, the sleep called death. Jesus had to die. Just like God opened up Adam's side and he took out his flesh and created Eve. So, so the father allowed when Jesus died, that spear to pierce his side. And his side was pierced in the blood 
and the water poured out of his side. And what must we do? How are we born again? No, we don't enter back into our mother's womb, but we are born of the water and we're born of the spirit. And so when Jesus died on the cross and that spear was thrust into his side and the blood and water came out, this was a picture of the birthing of the new Eve, which is the new church, which is the bride of Christ. But we know that it wasn't just in death, though it was it was birthed in death, but it it's it's it lives in resurrection power. And so we as the church in this day, in this hour, Jesus came to set us free so that we can live, that we will look like him and act like him and be with him. And he, the Father, took his son and allowed the blood in the water to be poured out. And this is the blood in the water that has washed us and cleansed us and empowers us and gives us this resurrection power so that death can come, sorry, so that life can come out of places where there is deadness. So that these, those of us, you know, so that there will be no miscarriage of destiny. So that those who have felt that you have been like the, the phoenixes, birthed in the place of the ashes, wondering if you would ever be able to come and rise up to into your destiny. I just declare that you are rising this day, this hour on March 4th, that you are rising up into your place of destiny, that there is the sound. I can hear the sound in the spirit of the advancing armies of God. And it sounds even as in, you know, when they, they, they the strategy, uh, I can't remember who was in the Bible, but they talked about like, wait and listen, stand still and wait until you hear the sound of the angels marching in the tops of the mulberry trees. It's like, I can hear the sound of the spirit. I can hear the marching of the angels in, in, in the heavenlies. And they are coming on this day, on March 4th, there are angelic armies and hosts of heaven that have been released and they are marching and they are waiting for the generals to rise up and to take their place for the fivefold government of God to get situated and positioned in the earth and in a place where we are loving and holding on to each other and championing one another and able to walk all five apostle prophet evangelist pastor teacher all five in their place with their government position and authority and moving forward as the the generals who who get to command these armies heaven is waiting heaven is waiting and is looking for your agreement and is waiting for you to send marching orders so i just call for the church to rise up this day in this hour and to take your place Throw off your grave clothes. Some of you need to go up, take off your clothes and get in the shower. Throw off your grave clothes. You are not bound. You are free. You are free. So cast off those filthy garments and wash yourself, get in that shower. And as a prophetic act, just I talked about the blood and water that flowed out of Jesus' side. Get in the shower and wash yourself and ask him, Lord, wash me, make me new. Let that blood and that water, that cleanse, that poured out from Jesus in his death for my salvation, for my resurrection, let that come and wash me and cleanse me. Yeah. Guys, it's a powerful, powerful day. It is a powerful, powerful day. You know, it's so funny. I went to, um, I love how God speaks um, to me. I love there's 17 people on this call right now, always seeing 17. Victory. But uh, I walked in to catch the fire yesterday because um, Patricia Bootsma, who's a friend and, and a mentor from a past season, she was speaking at Catch the Fire Toronto, so I went down there, and as soon as I walked in, I smelt, and I don't smell in the spirit a lot, but I went in there, and all I could smell was like toasted marshmallows, like burnt marshmallows, and I don't know how many of you guys like roasting marshmallows on the fire. I'm the girl who likes to set them on fire until they're like completely black. I like to just char them and then I eat the black stuff and then I like put them back in into the fire. 
I can't do that anymore like right now because I just started a 30-day cleanse today so I'm off sugar but um toasted marshmallows I'm like god what is this saying you know and it he reminded me of it again today you know with the phoenixes rising up from the ashes the melted the sweetness the scent it's there's the burning there's the fire but then there is a sweet fragrant release and so this is what the lord is looking for when you are burned and we you know we've all wanted bless me god bless me god bless me god bless me god before he blesses us he has to burn us he has to purify us. He has to consecrate us. He has to set us apart. And that's what Jesus did for us. But he is looking for those who, though they have been burned, the fragrance that is released is a fragrance of sweetness. Yeah. And I can smell the sweetness of the rising church. I can smell the sweetness of the warriors who have gone through the battles, have gone through the trials, who have, have, have found you know, that all around them it has felt like everything has been sifted out and they feel in these places you know, of, of aloneness, of like confusion. There's been so much confusion and, and like a fog and just this desiring to move forward, but just not even, you know, some of you just... Have, because you've been in the place of birthing and the transition point, there is so much, there's confusion and there's disorientation, you know, and some of it is, you know, some of it, you know, some is, is from outside like enemy interference, but some of it is just by virtue of the pain of the process of birthing. Birthing is not easy. Labor is not easy and it doesn't come without a cost. But the Lord is so pleased for those of you, you have said, I know you have said, God, I will pay the price. God, I will count the cost and I will birth this baby. And for those of you who have felt, you had felt like the miscarriage of destiny, the Lord says, I am breathing new life. You have not miscarried. And he is speaking new life to that which you thought was lost. And he says, no, feel again in the spirit and feel the babe kick in your womb. Some of you are going to even, who some of you as a prophetic sign are going to find yourself even waking up this morning, this week, like tomorrow morning and mornings this week, and you're going to feel a little bit nauseous. You're going to feel a little bit of nausea. And so when you feel that you're like, why is my stomach a little bit off? You remember the Lord is saying, I am giving you this nausea. This morning sickness is a sign and a wonder to you because you need that confirmation to know that that which you thought was dead has been brought back to life. And so embrace it and worship him and praise him because there is a time when the, when that which is gestating on the inside, you know, it's not seen in the natural. And so you're going to feel that you're going to feel that spiritual morning sickness. And you're going to say, yes, God, I know that you are bringing the promises back that you're bringing them into fulfillment and you're going to praise him like you have never praised him before because this is the time this is the time of a great turnaround this is a time of the armies rising up and taking their place yeah jesus coming back for a victorious bride he's coming back for a warrior bride not a damsel in distress yeah yeah Ooh, so, so exciting. So exciting, guys. So exciting. Yeah. Take off those grave clothes. Wash your face. Take off those grave clothes and wash your face. Wash your face. Wash your face. Wipe your tears. Yeah. It's time to rejoice. It's time to rejoice. Whew. Yeah, so good. Wow. Thanks for, I'm just going to say hello to some of you guys. I really just wanted to like stay in the flow and just let that out. Cause I've been, you know, I've been going since 4:30 this morning and it is almost 10 o'clock 
at night and so I just easier for me if I don't you know keep stopping but want to say hello Kara Welk so good to see you Mickey LaFan from Australia Irene Grekoff Dina Dina Barb Raymond love you guys Linnell Drummer Tamara Bali Steve Thompson Danielle Burley Karen Crawford Kim McDonald, so much, so good to see you guys. Kayla Lopez, hello, you're just coming in at the tail end. But um, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. I just, you know, I just needed to release that. God was like, that was birthing on the inside of me before I got onto my mentorship group, which I was on for two hours with my students this evening. But you know, as always guys, if you are feeling drawn to the prophetic, if you feel like, you know what, I need a prophetic company, I need um, a, a place for mentorship, a place of community, a place to grow, a place to, you know, just have someone who's passionate on and on fire to like be speaking into you and helping to lay some, some strong new covenant foundations in your life, would love to, I would love to have you part of, of the group. So you can send me a message if you're interested in that. And, you know, one of these days I'm going to get it up on my website so you can pray for me. It's got to get up on my, uh, my website soon. All right, guys, have a great night. Love and appreciate you. Until next time.